Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding the central limit theorem using SPSS and Excel. So taking a look at the data view here in SPSS, I have fictitious data loaded in. I have an example of a normal distribution, an exponential distribution, and a uniform distribution. I created these three distributions using the transform compute variable dialog and under random numbers you can see the last one I calculated was the uniform but there's also normal and exponential functions available and for each of these three variables I have 10,000 scores So let's first take a look at the histogram for the normal distribution. I'm going to go up to graphs, legacy dialogues, and then histogram, and take the variable normal, move it over to the variable list box, and click OK. So as you can see, this is what the normal distribution variable looks like. And I copied the values from this variable over to Excel. And here in Excel, I've built a calculator that takes random samples from the 10,000 values. So the 10,000 values are in column C. And over in column E here, it has 100 randomly sampled values from those 10,000. And then over in column B, we have the means of each of those random sample sets. So I have 100 values here, and I have the mean for each set of 100 values. So this is run 100 times. So each time column E is populated with a new set of random values from column C, a mean is generated, it's run again, and the random sample is different, another mean is generated, and this goes on for 100 times. So we have 10,000 values. We draw a sample of 100 values, a random sample of 100 values, and then we take the mean of those 100 values and put up here in B1 and B2 would be the mean of the next 100 randomly sampled values. So that's how we get the values here in column B. And then the values here from column B are plotted onto this histogram. So if I hit clear, it's gonna empty out column B. I click sample and I'm using VBA to do a lot of this. And you can see it has the histogram for all the means of the random sample groups. And you can see this is approximately normally distributed. I clear run another sample. And I keep repeating this. And as I look at these distributions, the majority of them appear to be normally distributed. And I can keep doing this many, many times and the vast majority of the distributions will be normal. And that's really what the central limit theorem is stating. That for any distribution, if you draw repeated samples from that distribution and you take the mean, or you could take the sum of those randomly drawn samples, those mean values are gonna approximate the normal distribution. So you might be looking at this and thinking, well, I have normally distributed data that I moved over into column C. So my random samples are drawn from normally distributed data. And then the means of the random samples over here in column B. So it might not be surprising that every time I clear and resample, I'm going to get a distribution that looks pretty much like the normal distribution. But interestingly, the central limit theorem applies to any underlying distribution. So if I were to go over here to distributions, another worksheet in the workbook I have here in Excel, 
In column A, this was the normal distribution from SPSS. Column B is the exponential, and column C is the uniform. So I'm going to move back over to SPSS, and let's take a look at the histogram for the exponential distribution. Graphs, legacy dialogues, histogram. I'll move normal out, move exponential in, click OK. And you can see this distribution is definitely not normal. This is an exponential distribution, 10,000 values. So if I go back to Excel, and I move to the top here, to B1, Control Shift down arrow, Control C. I just selected all of the values in the exponential variable. Move back to the main workbook, and then in column C, Control V. And now I have the exponential distribution as my 10,000 values. So I clear, hit sample again, and you can see it appears to be normally distributed. Clear, sample again, and once again, something approximating normal distribution. And again, I can repeat this many times, and the vast majority of times I'm going to get something that approximates the normal distribution. So again, moving back to SPSS, take a look at the uniform distribution. And first, I'll show you a histogram of the uniform distribution. Take exponential, move it out, uniform, move it in to variable, click OK. And you can see here that in a uniform distribution, the probability of any value coming up is roughly identical. So it has kind of the flat top here as opposed to uh, the exponential or the normal. The likelihood of any particular value being selected is equal to any other value. So if I go back to Excel, go over to Distributions, again I'll move to the top here, and in column C, this is a uniform distribution, Control shift down arrow, Control c I'll move this over to C1 and Control v Now I have a uniform distribution, clear and sample. And again, the histogram appears to be normally distributed. And I can again run this several times, and the vast majority of the distributions will be normal. The central limit theorem is crucial to inferential statistics because the assumption of normality is a very common assumption for parametric statistics. Without the central limit theorem, we could not have parametric statistics, and it would be difficult to draw inferences about a population using only a sample. And that's a cornerstone of statistics and research in counseling and many other fields. I hope you found this video on understanding the central limit theorem using SPSS and Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.